You know, the majority of show business personalities would explode if they weren't able to talk about themselves. That's why chat shows were invented. Of course, there are exceptions, like our next new face. He describes himself as merely a magician. Is Ian Keeble. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. As you've heard, my name is Ian Keeble, and I'm indeed a magician. Uh, that means I do magic and things. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> I, I hope you'll be able to handle it OK. Anyway, you look a great audience. Last time I had an audience this size, I went out of her for four years. It's true, four years. Long time in a man's life, four years. Yes, we split up when I discovered magic and she discovered I wasn't. <laughs> but you don't want to hear about my personal problems. Uh, do you? <laughs> no. I can see you don't, which is a pity because with 12 million people watching, I thought this might have been a good opportunity. <laughs> Never mind, instead let me show you a trick. This is a trick I actually invented whilst waiting for a laugh in Macclesfield. <laughs> and it's, it's based on a series of incidents that happened to me when I was a child. Now, when I was a child, I was very young. Yes, I was very young indeed as a child. Actually, I had a tragic childhood. I was left an orphan at the age of six, but I ask you, what good is an orphan to a kid age six? <laughs> no good at all, of course. Absolutely useless. Well, as a child, I used to spend a lot of time looking through books and magazines and newspapers, daydreaming about what I liked to be when I grew up. And sometimes I daydream of becoming a merchant banker. A merchant banker, an impatient, decisive person who didn't just turn over the page of the financial press, physically tore them apart. <laughs> but when I grew up, I discovered I just didn't have the self-confidence to be a merchant banker. And sometimes I daydream of becoming a politician. A politician leaping through the pages of the opposition manifesto. A man who was capable, not only physically, but also verbally, of tearing it to pieces. But when I grew up, I discovered I just wasn't articulate. I just wasn't articulate. <laughs> I wasn't well-spoken enough to be a politician. <laughs> oh, there's an interesting story here about a, a man who crossed a great dane of a bicycle pump to produce a dog that really puts the wind up, Postman. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really very sorry about that joke. It's, but absolutely nothing to do with the act at all. <laughs> and sometimes I daydream of becoming an international sex symbol. <laughs> Not that surprising. You know. Nose have been a bit longer. I'm much better in profile anyway, look at that. No, perhaps you're right, yes. Yes, an international sex symbol, looking through the pages of the society press and wondering which lucky girl I would go out with tonight. But when I grew up, I discovered I just didn't have the looks to be a playboy. I was expecting a bit of disagreement there. I paid for four, I don't know where they are. Yes, and sometimes I daydream of becoming a millionaire. And that all these pieces of paper represent 100 pound notes. I don't worry about this last bit, by the way. I got a black belt in origami. <laughs> yes, and all these pieces of paper represent 100 pound notes. But when I grew up, I discovered I just wasn't clever enough to be a millionaire. And yet when I grew up, I also discovered to get on in life, you don't have to be especially clever or particularly self-confident. 
who don't have to be very well spoken or have dazzling good looks. I'd like to thank you all for being a most appreciative audience here this evening, and I hope you too can match up what you've got with what you want to be. As for me, my name is Ian Keeble, and when I grew up, all I wanted to be was a magician. Ladies and gentlemen, highly original and behind the times at the same time. Will he be a star? Let's see what our panel have to say. Lindsay? Well, I think he was a very bright and witty comic. And, and uh, he comes on, and unlike uh, Sean Stiles, he's, he goes with his looks. He comes on sort of pathetic and, he's, and he goes with it, a bit like sort of Woody Allen. He has a real wry wit. And, and we're all wondering, how's he going to get out of this? Just tearing up the newspaper. He had everybody sort of enthralled what he was going to do. And it's very clever just to have one joke and have that much control over the audience. And uh, I, I feel he could probably be a very good scriptwriter. Yes, yeah, good point. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> Nina. I thought he was great. I mean, here's a comedian with brains, somebody with, with intelligence oozing out of him every, every glance of his eyes. And, and also, it's nice to see a man doing physically what so many people have been doing privately for a long time, i.e. tearing the times to shreds. Oh. Barry? I have nothing useful to add. I, uh, I laughed all the way through. I thought it was extremely funny. I've recently been writing about the great comedian Jack Benny. And that's who I was reminded of with this young man, uh, Ian Keeble, standing out there. This is another Jack Benny in the making. Thank you, panel. You're still doing very well. You're still halfway up the board. Third, Ian Keeble, that cool magician. Ian Keeble, ladies and gentlemen. Stuff to make it? I think so. If you do, then press your buttons. Now for Ian Keeble on the blue. Going round the board, Ian. Their career is in your hands, ladies and gentlemen. It's going up. It's going up. He's taken second place. Third was Martin Berger. Martin Berger, ladies and gentlemen. 